Are you looking to take boring 2D images and turn them into 3D photos that are cinematic and look like video? Well, this tutorial has you covered. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Hope you're doing excellent today. If you're new here, be sure to smash that subscribe button for more post-production tutorials like this. Now, I've done this tutorial several times in the past, but I've never done it with Adobe Photoshop, which I believe is the best way to separating your 2D photos first and then bring them over to After Effects to animate. So we're gonna start this tutorial off by separating our image in Photoshop. So before we jump in, be sure to smash that like button because it helps out this channel tremendously. And now since you've done that, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, here we are in Photoshop. Every image is different, but we'll be working on this one in this tutorial. I even set this up for a meme uh, photo animation as well, uh, but we're gonna be working on this image because it's a little bit more realistic uh, scenario. So we'll come here to File, New, and we'll set this to 1920 by 1080 right away, and we'll click on Create. We will import our image into the document, Go ahead and expand it until it fits 16 by 9 like this and the reason why we're doing a 16 by 9 look is you know because this is supposed to be video right all right so what we're gonna do is right click on our layer go to rasterize layer and come into the background we'll just delete that then we'll take our original photo that we have here and we'll hit Control j on our keyboard to duplicate it command j on a mac and we'll rename it to foreground okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here click and hold down and find the quick selection tools the so fourth icon down and if we hit brackets on our keyboard here so it makes it brush a little smaller and larger what we can do is just start kind of painting or grabbing the foreground so it's gonna be the subject and you know this foreground object here and we'll grab her arm hold down alt on your keyboard to deselect anything that should not be in the foreground so the idea that you need to be thinking about is depth okay so there's really only two planes of depth that I'm willing to work with on this image the foreground and the background anything that's in the background kind of needs to be deselected so what I'm going to do here is to kind of deselect these I guess you know background trees here make sure we only have what's important and I'll start painting in some of the foreground objects here Okay, so by no means this has to be perfect. We'll paint some of this back in here in a second. But when you have a rough mask of this ready to go, we'll come here to select and mask and we'll set the feather to like 1.5 to two, click okay. And we're gonna come here to the layer mask icon here at the bottom of the layers panel. And now we'll have our selection selected right there. Now it's not perfect. We'll work on that in a few moments. So now what we wanna do is take our original image duplicate it control J command J on a Mac we'll come here and grab the pen tool and we're just gonna do a rough mask around the foreground like this okay just like that and we'll close it up just the foreground area and we'll come here to uh, selection click OK and delete it so now we're left with this what we're gonna do is hit shift F5 on our keyboard set the fill to content aware and click on OK and this will do a really rough job of just filling in this transparency with the pixels around it. So it looks terrible, but that's okay. We just need to have something there. So when we rotate this three space, there's just something there that we can slightly see. Uh, depending on what you're working with, you might need to be a little bit more perfect, but we'll talk about some techniques there that can help you. So now what we want to do is we'll see that we have this cut here very easy to fix just grab the spot healing brush tool and just paint around that cut and you see it goes away and we'll just go ahead and quickly brush that out okay so i'll go ahead and turn my foreground back on and you'll notice if actually we look at the original that we're missing some of that foreground detail and you know some of that background looks a little bit muddy so we can quickly fix some of this we'll grab our foreground layer mask we'll come here to the brush tool make sure that this is set to white the color here and we can start painting in what we accidentally you know cut off and we'll just kind of paint around the edges like this so i'm happy with this image and just to show you real quick we, you can create multiple depth layer here so you'll see that i cut out you know two different depth layer there and then we have the background because meme girl one is the foreground meme couple here is the midground and then we have the actual background so you can have multiple layers of depth just completely up to you and when you're happy with your look, what you're gonna do is go to File, Save As, and click OK. 
Before we get into animating this in After Effects, I just want to let you know that even though it's fun to do this manually yourself, there's an amazing template that will allow you to create 3D photos in minutes. This is called Volume Max, and Volume Max works just exclusively for After Effects, and all you have to do is import your photo of any type, quickly highlight what parts of your photo you want to create a focused 3D look on, and bam, you're done. I'll link Volume Max in the description, so if you want to check out how the entire template works, that link will be below. Okay, so now that we have After Effects loaded up, we're going to go ahead and import that document that you just saved into here. Uh, make sure you click on Composition, Editable Layer Styles to select, click OK. Double click on that composition to open it up, and now it's been imported. And just to let you know, if your image is not perfect and you need to make some changes back in Photoshop, you can make them here and save it and it'll automatically update in After Effects. So that is really cool. All right, so the first thing we need to do is set this up for depth and create some 3D look in here. So what we're gonna do is we'll delete our original because we don't need it. Come here, set this to a 3D layer for both of these layers that you have here or more if you created more depth. And what we're gonna do is go to layer, new camera, click okay. And we'll grab our background layer. We'll hit P on our keyboard for position. And you'll see we'll have the Z position here. And we'll go ahead and bring this layer back. And we'll hit Astro keyboard for scale. And we'll just scale this back to how it was. But the difference is, is that now we'll actually have some depth in this image. Okay, so now what we can do is open up camera one, go to transform, add a keyframe for point of interest and position. We'll come here to the end of the animation, say we want this to be five seconds in length. And we'll come here and grab the camera tool here at the top, the orbit around cursor tool. And you'll see we'll have some 3D depth and you know, in a 3D stack here. It looks terrible, but just go ahead and create your angle and you can cycle through the cursors here by hitting C on your keyboard and you'll get this dolly-ish icon with two arrows. You can zoom in on the shot and we'll get this four arrow icon and we can reframe it. So what's going to happen is we'll have this animation like this and it looks awful. So what we can do is grab our background layer, go to effect, we'll go to uh, stylize and we'll grab motion tile uh, and increase the output width and the height and check on mirror edges. And that will duplicate your shot. Now, another thing you could do is you could scale up the background instead of using motion tile. Completely up to you. I'll also apply this to the foreground just to make sure we're all squared away there. So now we'll have our 3D camera movement in here. And, you know, it's coming together. We need to add some more elements in here just to really, you know, sell the movement of this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and create some effects. You can take or leave some of these, but I do suggest them. Go to layer, new adjustment layer. We'll go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and we'll add a Grain for this. Set the Viewing Mode to Final Output. Come here to the Intensity, and we'll bring this down to like 0.6. And we'll come here to the Size, and we'll bring this down to like 0.2. And this will add actual grain to your shot. And, you know, it's completely up to you how much you want to use. But I do suggest adding this because an actual video has noise to it or film had grain to it. Uh, and I just think it's missing it without every pixel moving. So then we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer. We'll go to effect, distort, and we're gonna grab optics compensation. Come here at the beginning of the timeline and we'll add a keyframe for field of view. Check on reverse lens distortion. Come here to the end of the animation and we'll go ahead and increase this up to like 50 to 60. Don't go over the top, but this will kind of help warp into this shot a little bit. It's gonna be very subtle, but it helps. Then let's create one more adjustment layer call it blur and we'll go to effect blur sharpen and we'll grab camera lens blur go to the beginning of the timeline set the blur radius to 10 add a keyframe for it of course and check on repeat edge pixels go to like a second and a half and set the blur radius to zero so we'll have an out of focus look and then it will you know focus out come here to maybe like i don't know two and a half seconds somewhere in your animation grab our layer hit u to bring up those keyframes like that add a keyframe move forward and we'll just set the blur radius up to like maybe 20 and then you know move forward a little by a little bit more and set it back down to zero so kind of be like the camera went out of focus for a split second and a really cool effect and select all the keyframes hit f9 to make them easy easy keyframes now i want to add just a little bit of camera shake to this to you know make it even more realistic like like i said take or leave some of these these are just tips go to layer new null object we'll grab our camera layer parent it to the null We'll make it a 3D null object by clicking that 3D icon. Hit P on keyboard for position. All click the stopwatch and type in wiggle. Open parenthesis 0.8 comma. You know, we'll do like 30. All right. 
So now with our creative effects applied, it's gonna help really sell this into something that's a little bit more, I guess, realistic. Now we still have some other tips that we can add to this to really take this next level. So we have some atmospherical effects along with some extra motion blur ideas. So let's go ahead and talk about the atmospherical effects before we get into motion blur. So for this scene in particular, we have a source here, the sun that should be flickering and animating. So be thinking about objects in your photo that you can animate that would seem seamless, right? So what we're going to do is go to layer new solid, we'll call it flare. So what we can do is identify a light source, go to effect generate uh, lens flare and we'll toggle switch to modes set the blend mode to screen and we'll just move our lens flare where the Sun actually is and make sure that this is a 3d layer and we'll just put it underneath our creative effects come here to flare brightness we'll just do a wiggle open parenthesis you know 2 comma 50 close parenthesis like that and this will move with our scene and also flicker and specifically from our motion graphics professionals pack we have some lens flares in here light leaks and even particles that you can use and along with a thousand other templates in this pack that you can use to help you on any project that you're working on including really cool promo videos and things like that but from this pack i'm gonna go ahead and add some elements i will give you these elements that i'm using for absolutely free it's gonna be a light leak and particles so be thinking about some third-party elements that you can you know use as atmospherical effects inside your scene so now with these extra atmospherical effects here it does add increase movement to our scene however my biggest problem that i have is the motion blur and i want to say that the basic motion blur that you should have on is not enough for my taste i really want to sell the movement so what i'm going to do is create another adjustment layer and we're going to go to effect time and we're going to grab cc force motion blur bring this layer just above your photo contents and just keep in mind that this effect is going to crush the soul of your computer. I mean, it increases the export time exponentially, but it's well worth it. And come here to shutter angle. We'll set this up to 2000. Now for your photo and your speed of your movement, just keep in mind that this is a really high setting. So if you have a slow image like mine, 2000 probably will work. If you have a fast moving image, maybe 180 to 500 is gonna work. This is really where you can increase the motion blur. And now for CC force motion blur applied, here's what we have. All right, I wanna leave this tutorial just with one more idea for further animation to help sell this as a moving image, okay? It's the puppet pin tool, animating your foreground object, your main subject of your scene very slightly. So what I'm gonna do is double click my foreground layer, which is this one. I'm gonna come here to the puppet pin tool, okay? And I'm going to just pin or put some pins here on the ground around my subject, just like this, so this is locked in space. Then I'll add some points on some parts that I wanna move. That should be good. I'm gonna keep this subtle. So I'll come here to five seconds, the end of our animation, and I'll slightly move the main pins around, and this will create somewhat of an animation. It'll be somewhat noticeable, but not over the top. And so by moving those main pins, you'll create some animation. Go back to your composition and it'll all be married into your scene. So with all of our elements combined, and remember some of these techniques you can take or leave, it's all up to you. We need to get these ideas out there so you have the tools for the job. So with all of this together, here's what we have. I think it looks really cool. All right, so now that we have this all done in Photoshop, we can take over our separated layers and we can animate them inside of After Effects. So now you can take a basic photo and you can animate it very easily inside of After Effects. We didn't go a whole lot in depth with every single technique that you can do in Photoshop, but for the most part, you don't have to put so much work into your photos. You can do some easy separation and animate them right there in After Effects. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, we post two post-production tutorials every single week right here. You can also hit us up on Instagram. We have tutorials on there as well. And always be creative.